Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ramon Foster Show, brought to you by Rochelle. <laughs> it feels like it needs something more to it, doesn't it? it like does. Rochelle, where uh, da -da 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 -da, where we, memberships are free forever. <laughs> <laughs> we we could try to pizzazz it up, but I feel like just by Rochelle might be good enough. DK, it sounds good. Like it just Rochelle just makes its own statement at this point, doesn't it? You, you know, know like did Amazon sound cool at first? Probably not. No, see, like this is like let's see, Mark Granis just says, Hey Rochelle. Hey Rochelle. Okay. Uh, or you can take the hand over fist approach, which is Rochelle. Rochelle. Man, we're back in here though, DK. What you think about that, man? You had uh little Florida time on your hand, huh? I had time is not the word I would use for that. I was oh. ridiculously busy down there. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was productive. It was four full days of baseball. Uh, intensive baseball coverage day and night. Moan, when I'm on an assignment or whatever, even if I'm the one doing the assigning, I am all in head first. I blocked out almost everything. Really? You know what was the only thing I didn't block out? Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only reason I was able to pull it off. The only thing I didn't block out was the Omar Khan press conference, which we're going to talk about today. You ready? Uh, oh, snap. No. Oh, ding, Rochelle. We got a bell we must hit. Let's yeah, what's that all about? Mm -hmm. You about ready, DK, yeah, to start yeah. this uh -huh. thing off right? Uh -huh. Let's do it. I could pretend that we would be talking about other stuff today, but Omar Khan brought up both of the quarterbacks yeah. in different contexts uh, related to, you know, obviously both Mason Rudolph, who's not signed, and Kenny Pickett, who obviously is signed. And he had some interesting remarks just just on a on a glance there, Moan. What's, what's your feel for what the Steelers want to do here? I, I, I think it's almost as if they're stuck and they'll deal with them somewhat too. Uh, it's not a biggie if we keep him, but we'd always be searching for somebody else. Omar, to me, was more transparent than I thought he was going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, be because openly he told you we're always looking for a better option. You know what I'm saying? Like, as yeah, pros, that's my job. Yeah. yeah <laughs> as pros, we know that. <laughs> but Omar, like, you hardly say that about the quarterback, too. Like, that's the other, that's the other factor of this, too, DK is you hardly ever say these types of things about the quarterback, about a guy that, that you believe in that you took in the first round. And here's the other side of this too, DK, respectfully, because I love both of them. I saw Omar down in uh, – I saw him in Indy too, by the way, man. He, uh, he was like, come to the suite. I was like, okay. And my timeline didn't allow me to go to where they were as coaches and stuff. So Omar is working. He's doing a lot. Um, it's, it's, it's fascinating though, DK, that you, you have a guy like Omar, who's in his position, that's doing it somewhat different than Kev. Here's the thing that you have to look at too. Respectfully, Kenny Pickett isn't an Omar guy. Kenny was Kev's gift to the franchise on his way out. Or so he thought. So he <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't even mean that in a mean way. I mean that that, that KC. I know it sounded like it. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. No, go all ahead. that means is that KC <laughs> KC could only think that he couldn't know that. Yeah. That was Kevin's. He was proud of the fact that he drafted Kenny Pickett, uh, the, and that they went and signed Mitch Trubisky, and he felt like he left the franchise in a pretty decent spot for finding their quarterback. As it turns out, he might have done that, but he might have done it back in 2019. Mm. <laughs> I hear you, DK. Um, with, with that being said, though, o Omar is um, I, I like Chris Ackwork right here. Call it like it is, DK. Is what he put up there. Call I it mean... like it is. Um, but that's the other side of it too. That level of attachment isn't there. That that level of 
of saying, yeah, this is about my guy. Like, it is his guy because the success of the franchise is usually put on the, the shoulders of the quarterback. But Omar saying what he said, no, DK doesn't have I don't, I, You think I'm standing out in the sun there? I'm <laughs> hiding inside the whole time, counting the minutes until I can leave. But o Omar saying what he said, though, man, uh, I think it should put Kenny in a different space. And a lot of people are going to say, you guys are anti-Kenny. No, I told you, and I think this is, has to be this franchise moving forward. They're pro winning. You're always drafting to get better or trying to find somebody in free agency. Omar pretty much told you what we said, too. I love certain guys, but I like winning a whole lot better. It's not a political race. It's not about who wins. It's, it's, it's about winning the games. Yeah. And the ultimate scenario here, by the way, for the Steelers, and I would think for their fans, too, is that both of them were awesome. Yeah. And let's just say that it's like the greatest summer competition you've ever seen. Yeah. Who, yeah. who wins in that scenario? Everybody does. Everybody does. Yes, they do. And yes, you don't do. sweat the details on it, right? Yeah. How many times, Moan, have you seen... Uh, a, a, a camp competition turn into something just like that, where you, you see it bring out the best in both guys, and then the team benefits. And then what do they say about how many places there are for those guys? Who cares? It's, it's, uh, exactly. Yeah. And, and and that's the beauty of it too. And I'm I'm glad to actually hear them say that out loud because I was being I was put in a situation like that, and other dudes were put in situations like that to where competition goes to the winner, right? Like you, mm -hmm. you want the best man to win. And sometimes it may be because of injury. Sometimes it may be because the other guy just quit on themselves. But what it will do is show you who's the best of the best. And that's where, to me, I think we somewhat had a competition at the end of the season with the quarterback play, DK. Mm -hmm. I think we did see that. Kenny, we allowed you to go get right. And then you had a competition of Mason coming in back against the wall, knowing that, look, I have to go perform. Or I'm going to go start selling commercial real estate. And he performed. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, that was another competition. Going into training camp, if Kenny and if Mason are both on roster, right? It's a competition in everything that they do. From their teammates to OTAs to minicamp to offseason. They're going to have each other in the back of each other's mind, right? From here on out until we figure out what is going to happen. If it was me, if it was me, DK, I would keep it as quiet as possible when it comes down to making yourself uh, I'm talking about a monster mentally because that's been some of the stuff that's been said about Kenny. Well, where's his mental side of it at? I, I, I love that, but man, go play ball. Among other things that Omar said, first of all, we have, we do have to address the elephant in the room here, which is that Jim McCarley wants to know if you're sitting on a beanbag chair, naked, eating Cheetos. <laughs> Jim, if only we could all dream, man. You have to get a subscription. <laughs> you have to get a subscription uh, to, to see that type of image, okay? Oh, man. Th this that's, just, that's just how it goes. Huh? Here's, a, it here's a little bit of a, a couple of samples of what Omar Khan said. This was to reporters yesterday in Indianapolis at the NFL scouting combine. He said regarding Mason, he knows we want him back. We've had conversations, but it's how the process goes. I can't tell when the deal will get done, hopefully with us, but it's just a process and I understand that. But we want him back. Moan, have you heard members of the Steelers management use terminology like that before and not get them not get that person back re repeatedly staying we want him back they said that about me and it happened every single time every single DK. time it happened every single time man i i can go through a list of other dudes we're we're, we're working on it we're going to make it happen like those types of things always come up and they usually settle themselves right uh i think cam will be in a situation like that um to where they try to make it work and stuff like that um as far as mason goes this is a uh <laughs> you got one you got one, okay, <laughs> this situation. But that wasn't a stiller one to me. No, that was the agent. James put Le'Veon up there. One. One. Um, Mason's agent should know what he's worth right now. Mason, Mason should know where his uh, bread is going to be buttered. The combine conversation – as far as the amount of agents up there, DK, mm -hmm. as far as the amount of GMs and coaches that are around too, they 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 set your market there for the most part. We got to wait two weeks to see what's going to happen as far as the signings. But 
I'd be somewhat shocked if Mason isn't in uh, Pittsburgh. And the other side, too, um, it's, it's fascinating. I had a very interesting conversation with a, uh, a member of the Steelers, right? Okay. Um, not, a, not a front office person, but somebody has been through the rigors and understand how it goes. So when I asked this person, I said, hey, man, in situations where you've seen guys get hurt, right, DK? And mm-hmm. they are the starters. And then they get healthy. I asked this person, I said, what, what's happened to you in that situation? I got my spot back. I was like, ah, okay. And we were discussing the quarterbacks. And I said, when it boils down to what we saw last year, and it was perceived that Kenny Pickett was healthy. Right. And he didn't go back in. I said, is that really his spot as far as him being a starter? He said, when you break it down like that, probably not. That's not his starting position. He's a holdover. He's a guy that you respect, you think you have something in him, but that's not your starting position. You're a guy that's occupying it if somebody else goes down or because you were the first rounder. Omar also said regarding Kenny, I have full faith in Kenny. He's shown us some good things, and obviously there were some issues with the offense. And I'm excited about the impact that Arthur Smith's going to have on him. Arthur's very optimistic about Kenny, and I know they've communicated. We'll have some strong competition there, and we'll see where it goes. Feel really good about him. That makes now Moan three for three, meaning Mike Tomlin, Art Rooney, and Omar Khan, all of them, when they brought up Kenny this offseason, since the season ended, they would conclude the thought with, but, dot, dot, dot. Remember, we brought it up each of the other two times. You did. They never get through the thought without saying, but there's going to be competition. Every single time, almost as if they're trying to convince themselves. I don't know. It's, it's it's honestly just a uh, a, a, politi- a politically correct answer, DK. Okay, that's what that was, um, because he's still your guy. If Mason decides that even money is going to somebody else, and he'd rather go to another city, then you don't want to crap on on Kenny Pickett the entire offseason. That's essentially what it is, DK. But the fact that they're still yelling competition, competition, competition after Ben's second year in the NFL, did they bring up competition much at all? No. Oh. At the starting quarterback. And, and just to give, because we've spoken about it before in my day job, right, DK? Mm-hmm. I heard, uh, who was it, the, the Titans' new head coach, Brian Callahan, say this. They were asked, they asked him about Malik Willis at his press conference at the Combine. And then it, he said, what we're going to do is bring in a guy that's going to compete with Malik Willis. What's that mean? They didn't mention Will Levis. They want competition. Oh, that's be the best what that backup. means. Duh. Okay. He didn't yeah, mention yeah, yeah. Will Levis competition, right? That's what that's what yeah. you essentially just said, right? That's, that's like, kind why? of underhanded, but yeah. But but why are we having a competition at the Steelers starting quarterback? But as far as the backup in Tennessee, he's the only one that's got competition, not your franchise guy. That's the separation between the two to me. The two to me is saying. Will Levis is established as the Titans franchise quarterback for right now. As it pertains to Pittsburgh and Kenny Pickett, we're going to put you in a competition. (laughs) That's two different worlds right there, DK. It's very different worlds. (laughs) There there, there can't be any any doubt about that. I just, my overall impression here, and including some other stuff that that, uh, Omar said, because this is something else I meant to ask you about today as well. Okay. He also brought up the fact that he fully expects Mason to go to free agency and to see what's out there. They've had that dialogue with you as well. What exactly does that mean, and what's their real intent in doing that? I want you to see the market for what it is. They know they don't want he, you to feel like you're going to get underpaid in Pittsburgh. Exactly. If somebody matches you because we know what the market is probably going to be, mm-hmm. then we'll give you some more just to keep you. That's essentially like they probably know – and, and I think we probably may need to bring it back as to what Mitch, I mean, not Mitch, what Mason may end up asking for too and what he'll end up getting. I'm I'm of the mindset if he gets between 7 to 12 as a backup because that's essentially what Mitch uh, got, right? Then I think that he stays home. I don't know if there's going to be anybody that pays him 15 to 20 anymore. I just don't know if I see it. 
too many other free agent quarterbacks that can get picked up real quick. And also, it'll be a run on quarterbacks early in this draft for teams that actually need them. Yeah, there will. Market is set and get self now. That's essentially what he's saying. You can go see if there's greener pastures. If they are, man, hate we're going to miss you. But I got a good feeling he'll find his way back in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I, again, I just I keep coming back to the I, I pay such close attention to what it is that they say and also what they do. And in this case, they've dovetailed for decades now. They know exactly what they they're know. doing in these scenarios, I, unless there's some kind of nutcase agent involved. And there was <laughs> with with Levy on Bell. It's gotten done every single time. Uh, when we come back, we're going to get into. Uh, well, I think the barber has it wrapped up here. Yeah, he got us. This is the only segment that matters, man, and that's Hey Moan. He understands how it works, the barber, by the way. He's smart. He's smart. He doesn't cut corners. Ah, uh, no doubt. Uh, cut corners. I uh, hear the dad joking. Nah. Hey, by the way, hit the like button on the break right here, man. How about that? Or I'll tell more of those types of jokes. <laughs> that was a threat. Dad. That fell flat, but I picked threat. it back up. I got you. <laughs> At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now, that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores. Track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. The barber does keep us uh, lined up. The barber does not <laughs> cut corners. Oh, no. We're not going to turn this into a thing Don't today. Don't do that. We're not? <laughs> get get uh, it together. I was about to try to uh, say one, DK, but no, nah, I'm going to pass on that one, man. You, all right. you, hit them I wanna, all. you lined them all up. and knock I want to thank Antonio. We both do uh, for five yeah. memberships. And then Jared comes in with 20. Mm-hmm. Uh, we appreciate that. The people who will be accepting those gift memberships appreciate it. Carrie's always poking around with that one. You notice that? You know what? That's all we I need, baby. Like He's it. doing yeah. his thing with that, man. What is that? The uh, British flag behind him, too? The UK flag? It, and it looks a... like some version of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I believe that. Uh, let's see. I, I've been saving some pretty good cues here. Uh, here here's one from... Uh, Ian, who says if 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 Kenny were to start next season and play similarly to the way he did last season, how long would he last as QB one? Do you think what kind of leash is there? If the performance this is this is Ian's qualifier. If the performance stays about the same, if the performance stays about the same from what we've seen, um, I think you look at a situation where a second half of the season. It's where you start to transition out of a guy like him. Um, 62% completion rate last year. Um, what was it? Six touchdowns and four interceptions. Lad, the year before that, his rookie year, he was seven and nine as far as touchdowns and uh, interceptions. I think you probably leave him in long enough to where you may, p- may be picking in the top 10 to go get your other quarterback. That's, that's the only other uh, option for me, y'all. Oh, here's a crazy thought. How about if he performs the same way he did this past season and he isn't the starter to start the season? I mean, I I think that's a pretty reasonable thing to say here. I don't think that's cutting him up or anything. If he's the 28th best quarterback in the NFL, which he just was this past season, why would he get the job? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, where is it ordained? Why is it his development? or whatever is owed to him is a priority over the football team winning football games. That's so fair, DK. I like this. Daniel says, uh, is it smoke and mirrors? Because this came up with uh, Omar Khan as well, referring to Nate Herbig as a center option. What do you see there in Nate Herbig? Is he a guy? I mean, he never got on the field, Moan. He didn't. Um, He's the guy that's on your roster. That, that's, that's the that's easiest That's what that answer. sounded like. Yeah. Like, he's the guy that's on your roster right there, man. And that's essentially what that means, DK. It ain't nothing personal to say he is the guy. But here's the thing, too. The fact that he didn't see the field also puts you in a position to where you don't know what you're going to get with his play. And considering you you uh, may end up switching your tackles, okay, we got to see what happens with Isaac and also James, too. So, 
It's just new. He's the guy that's on your roster. That is probably the simplest, silliest answer to give. Um, but it also, I think, makes you understand that they're probably planning at some point to draft another center. I don't know if it's at 20. Again, Jackson Powers Johnson or Zach Frazier out of West Virginia. Like, those seem to be the two dudes. The question I have to ask too, DK, is it a reach to go get one of those guys? Or is it just simply necessary to have a first-round center, which the last one you had was daggone good with Marquise? I don't want to reach. That's my main point as it, as it, results, uh, as it relates, I'm sorry, to the number 20 slot. I don't want to reach. Okay, I want to see this team just take the best available player okay. exempting quarterbacks. Okay, I don't think you can, and I don't say that because the, the Steelers are all set for all eternity at quarterback. I'm saying that because they just drafted a first rounder. So, so you know, how many yeah. first round quarterbacks do you want to see them draft this, uh, uh, in a row? You're, you're start, you're going to start throwing away assets, and first round picks are assets. Uh, <laughs> Being on the Uncle Stable is weird, Dutch Master. <laughs> Dutch Master. It absolutely is. I, I've, I've Drew, always heard uh, people say you never want to be drafting for need all the time. That's it. And they've done it three years in a row. They if you really get it. down to it, running back, quarterback, and then the, the offensive tackle. tackle. I've even okay. seen another mock with the tackle again. Mm -hmm. I know that means nothing, but go ahead. I don't I don't believe that for a second here. Yeah. Drew Belansky wants to know what, what you're taking in the first round, Moan. Center, tackle, DB, wide receiver are the options that he gives you. Is it something else? Uh, give me a t -t -t center. Sorry. Out of this four, what if Out it was just four. up to you? If it was up to me with this draft, if it was up to me, I'd probably go DB. Oh, okay. I'd probably go DB. Yeah, it's up there too. Um, if you can show up one piece and then, of course, find your center in the second round or find another wide receiver in the second round, you got options. I just think if you got an opportunity to get one of those dudes, and here's the thing too, the flow of the flow of the draft does a lot for you too. If there's a run on quarterbacks early, let's yes. say, you see what I'm saying? Yes. One of them flips. So I think your guys keep moving down. Yeah, and uh, just for instance, one of those guys, he may be the second or third ranked overall cornerback, but Kool-Aid McKinstry has a Jones fracture. Now, I don't know if that pushes him down further. I some had him in the second round. How do you say Kool-Aid McKinstry without at least <laughs> pausing to respect the man's name? <laughs> Let me start it over then. So Kool-Aid McKinstry. <laughs> Kool-Aid McKinstry. Let it breathe. <laughs> That is big. That's a cool. You better be cold with a name like that. Oh, can you imagine if he's like just a total nerd? Oh my god. Nah. <laughs> and he's walking around with the name Kool-Aid. It's Kool-Aid. Yeah. Hey, it's Kool-Aid. <laughs> Leave me alone, you you <laughs> metal <men>. kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so, they named you Kool-Aid. You had no choice in to, life. To be ice cold and break through walls, right? <laughs> um, but he's a guy that may get pushed back and you know like it's it's some dudes may move up in this pre-draft process that's that's been something so you got to watch the flow of the draft too um but there may be a guy there that you may end up loving so we'll see <laughs> barber's just winning the episode today yeah. remember when no when when the actual kool-aid uh thing <laughs> would, would would go running through a oh, yeah. wall and he'd yell out, oh, yeah. Like so Andy Reid does, right? That's right. <laughs> oh, man. And he's Sonny D. Oh, so this is what we're doing. Okay. And he's Sonny and his brother is Sonny D. I got you. I you got do, you. Chris, you do not know anybody named Kool-Aid. <laughs> I, I can believe that. I can believe I, you know somebody like Kool-Aid. I, I know somebody think... named Milk Dud. <laughs> there, there, finally you got one <laughs> finally I'm you've been serious. waiting the whole episode to get <laughs> okay now you knew somebody named milk that and she's in one of my cousins man rest his soul you know what his nickname was we his nickname was cat daddy all right. Yo, for real. Cat Daddy was his milk name. Dug, straight up. Yo, milk Dug, that's just me. Yeah, Milk <laughs> Dug was his name. <laughs> look at look at Dolly. She's got tears in her eyes. I love it. I'm telling you, man. Uh, yeah. Milk Milk Dud McKinstry would have had a nice little you know smooth movement to it. Yeah, you I know? love that one. Milk Dud McKinstry. Man. You say that. Next thing you know, we're gonna start getting uh late entertainment names because this group will go that way, okay? Speaking, the uh, gentleman club. That's right. Speaking of Barber, he says, 
Uh, my buddy, who he refers to as Uncle's Table Todd, mm. never romanticized being at the Uncle's Table. Jeez. It's not cool, Aid. Not even. <laughs> McKinstry. <laughs> anyway, Barber's buddy <laughs> says, uh, he doesn't think that you two have stated in the past that we kept Ben Roethlisberger a couple seasons too long. Can you clarify that, please? Uh, is there such a thing as keeping a Hall of Famer too long? I don't know. I mean, how much do you owe to him? How much do you how much do you tie to you guys being there and them wanting to win another one and Ben yeah. wanting to win one for you guys yeah. and Marquise? How do you say no to it? What do you do? Most competitors, man, that have that type of flex and power uh, usually somewhat get what they want. And not in the sense of disrespect, but 19, you had the elbow injury, right? That's one of those years. And then 20, you had COVID and he thought he could make it happen, right? 11 and, then, and 0. 11 and 0. Like that whole entire storyline. So which year did you want to get rid of him? You want yeah. a guy like him to be gone in the injury year? Do you give him 20, give him 20 and also 21 and say, well, we'll see what happens from there. You almost had to give him the last year too. not give it to him, but they brought you two Super Bowls. He brought you a lot of great things inside of them stadiums on Sundays, Mondays and Thursday nights mm -hmm. to just boot him at that position that you know is going to be a bona fide Hall of Famer. That's a tough business spot to be in. Oh, not to mention, it's not like there was a replacement sitting around. I get what you're saying. I do. I absolutely. And then here's the other side of it, too. Even with them, you. <laughs> this is your problem right here. I'm going to do it again, DK. Here's your problem right here, good people, okay? Uncle Table, <laughs> you're never trash enough to be picking the guy that you want also. The year that you needed a quarterback was Ben's last year. Above 500 again, I think it was the first, was it playoffs that year? Or whatever it was, right? You're mm -hmm. never trash enough to be picking in the top 10. So to say you let them um, have one too many years, I'd say with our group, we probably went a little bit too long, probably put you behind the eight ball a little bit. But Ben wasn't going to be trash, and you also wasn't going to trade Ben, right? You just weren't. This isn't an Aaron Rodgers situation right here or Tom Brady. Like, Tom's expired, and he went on somewhere else. I think everybody thought Tom was done. So when it comes down to hitting and missing on that type of stuff, it's it's easy to say you kept him too long. It's easier to say that. Like, that's that's a hard decision for that type of position. I, my feeling on that is that it played out exactly the way that it should have, it's including not, including and especially Ben getting that lap, literally. Everybody gets it now. Yeah. And he deserved it. Yeah. And and that's that's the way that played out. The team got into the playoffs. Um, you know, didn't go so well in the playoffs for anybody, but you know, they they got there and uh he ended on a W here. You know, the family in the house and all that other stuff, it all worked out. Look, they, that, that team wasn't winning the Super Bowl. It, it was not. And, okay, so that draft pick, can I go real quick with it? Mm -hmm. Najee's number one, established a run game. That hit. Pat has hit so far. Kendrick, you know, Dan Moore has been a three-year starter for you. Couldn't tell you, buddy. Justin, Isaiah Louder, Milk has been serviceable. Quincy Rose, Trey Norwood, and Presley Harvin just got let go. I mean, if anything, we're going to look at the draft class, right? As far as where you at right now, it, it's a lot. It's Chris a lot want, I don't think Chris wants would. to know if we ever read Reddit. Is Does Reddit still exist? Isn't that just like a, isn't that like a 1990s message board? Uh, it still does. I've never seen still the stuff come up either like that. Yeah. Uh, what did, I'd love to know more context on that type of stuff. Yeah, I, I'm not actually all that curious. Chris yeah. says, why not have Kenny Pickett sit behind Mason Rudolph, presuming he resigns, resigns for a season to develop? Look at Jordan Love and Mason himself. I, I, I don't have a problem with this scenario from the Kenny perspective. Okay? I, I keep going back to this, and maybe it's unfair or whatever, but the, the snippy answer that he gave the reporter after Mason's first start, you know, did you learn anything from watching out there? No. 
<laughs> remember that? I do remember that. Okay. And yeah. I'm not, I don't even know that I'm exaggerating the intonation. If that's your attitude or your, your, your mindset that you just, you're not going to improve by watching and learning or whatever, you saw the exact opposite of that with Mason who comes onto the field and said that he was actually, he's on the sideline mouthing cadence yeah. when other people were at quarterback, including Ben, because he wanted to make sure that he was in the rhythm of the game, that he was feeling what they were feeling, seeing what they were seeing. And that got the highest praise, by the way, of anything else that Mason achieved in 2023 from Mike Tomlin. He stressed the word readiness yeah, he said, "I can't say enough about what this young man did to stay ready." Uh, that's that's pretty good stuff, you know. Chris, what sucks about uh, you uh, by suggesting they do a Jordan Love thing too is this: is that means you also have to watch and Mason possibly do well, or right if Mason doesn't do well, you put Kenny back in. Are you committed to him because the fifth year option is always there too? Either you got to pay him. Oh yeah. Like that. That's also why I look at the uh, the the Justin. Uh, what's his name? Justin Fields situation. As to why I don't think it makes sense for Pittsburgh. He's due a contract this moment you trade for. Him. You know, like that's what Kenny is up against. Also, letting him sit for a year and Jordan loved that thing. Now, nah, essentially, what he'll turn into is essentially what Mason is right now. St hopefully, you stay around long enough that you get better. I right? I don't know why we're trying to convince ourselves. That kitty's going to turn into Cinderella. Yeah, I, I mean, he it'd be wonderful if yet. he did. It'd be wonderful if he did. I'd be singing as loudly as anybody if it happens. Okay, this isn't about trying to bury him or anything else here. Okay, but you got to want it. Yeah, you do. I, I see one. It's just like this isn't just sprinkling angel dust on something. Jackson B says neither are going to win a Super Bowl. Need to be aggressive in the draft for a quarterback. You know how far from 20 to the top 10, how much capital, draft capital you got to give up? You, you, you know how much capital you got to give up to go from 20 to 10 or into the top 10? This isn't Madden. Mm -mm. Jackson, I'm sorry. It's not Madden. You can't say go be aggressive and just snap your fingers. You mean as far as getting a quarterback? Yeah, because Jackson said this right here. As far as Mason, Mason or Kenny not winning, I'm with you. Okay, you got to surround guys. He says neither are gonna win a Super Bowl. Need to be aggressive in the draft for a quarterback. If you need any help, you know. there was an amazing uh, list that I saw today uh, on on Twitter as it yeah. related to quarterbacks taken in the top ten over the last couple of years. Uh, <laughs> it ain't pretty. <laughs> no. So we got CJ Stroud after one year. Yeah, he's it. Okay, how many years you said CJ Stroud is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And now, and and CJ, not everybody saw him coming. No, absolutely not. Okay. He got dogged in the pre-draft. Well, also, not everybody has the coaching that he has. That's very true. I mean, too. Houston's put together a really, really nice staff down there. I mean, Jim put it. What do you say? Uh, CJ is it. CJ is it. That's what he said here. Where Where is it here? Uh, Rich said it. CJ is it. So this idea that if you work your way into the top 10, which by the way, everybody in Steelers land would be giddy over. If the Steelers took a draft at a top 10 guy right now, we'd be throwing parades around here. It'd be the greatest thing you've ever seen. Okay. But as Joe points out, you know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of different ways to look at this, but the idea that the quarterback in the top 10 is some sort of instant magical cure-all it's, it's just not okay and if you want proof of that mac look jones at both of the new york teams look at chicago patriots look at the patriots ever since that what? sixth rounder they took forever ago Tua okay. to me look how much they had to surround Tua. their owner overspent for Tua to be somewhat decent with the guru of an offensive head coach who, who else is in that conversation, DK? Look at Carolina after one year, right? Look oh, at New yeah. York. New York had to forcibly pay. Either either New York team. Either New York team, yeah. right? Yeah. And look look at – okay, another San Francisco. Trey Lance ain't even in that team with that team no more. 
or you have to go overpay for a quarterback the way the Saints did for Derek Carr, and that netted nothing either. Mm-hmm. It's a lot harder than I think. And this ain't picking on my guy that put up, you know, neither one of them are going to win a Super Bowl. Like, it's just essentially this is a buildup. I'd much rather build up around them than to say, you'll sell all your, your uh, draft capital to get a quarterback. There's no guarantee in that. Hornets wants to know from you, Moan, how does competition factor into the reps that you get in camp? And how big a part of it is it that? Because I'll hear guys behind the, you know, away from microphones or whatever, this and that about reps. If I can't get reps, how can I show what I can do? Man, it's such a mind freak. Okay? Yeah, I can imagine. That's the impression I get. It's such a mind freak. Mind freak. Oh, you know the other word I'd much rather. It's yes. a family network, okay? Yes. I don't I, like Pittsburgh Hornets. They keep him up there because it's I almost am. like a hornet's nest. It is. Each day is like that because I feel better when it's my day. All right, if we got eight reps and I'm getting five, he gets three, I need to make the best out of these five because tomorrow it might be the opposite. And then what you start to see, and I used to love watching the beauty of – how these guys uh, somewhat build themselves up too. Because you see them here, and they don't know they're even. And then one guy does this, and then it goes here, and then it goes up, and then it falls down. Like, it blows your mind, the pressure that you feel when those competitions, like, the reps matter. Because the moment you start to see, and I was in that situation before, Moan, you the ones today. Okay, Moan, got to roll with the twos tomorrow. Moan, you with the ones. Have a good scrimmage. Moan you with the ones. Aha. Uh-huh, okay. Moan you with the ones. And you usually get about a, a, a one day heads up on it. D- there, yeah. And it might be the day of sometimes too. Coach, what's the rotation today? You get five, he get three. Like, and in those three reps, you better make them your best three reps possible. Mm-hmm. You can't, and sometimes the coaches want to see sometimes, EK, the guy that's getting three reps may actually be in the league. They just want to see how, what kind of teammate you're going to be and how you handle adversity and how can you handle working next to a guy if you're supposed to be a starter type and this dude is a backup to your right or to your left. Can you still perform high amongst the twos? Like there is so much psychological stuff that go into a DK. Like it will really, if you're not strong mind, I'm going on the tangent because if you're not strong minded, your physical tools mean nothing. That's what it does for you with reps. Really good stuff here uh, from Rodney Brooks, who did some instant research for us here. Either that or he knew all this off the top of his head. Top 10 quarterbacks, meaning guys who were drafted in the top 10 over the last decade. Bryce Young, Anthony Richardson, Zach Wilson, Trey Lawrence, or Trey Lance, sorry. Uh, Daniel Jones, Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen, Mitch Carson Wentz, Jameis Winston, and Jameis is making something of a career. He's for been himself. around for a while. Yeah, Marcus Mariota uh, left out off of this list is Trevor Lawrence. Although I pretty much turned Trey Lance into his name in reading it. Yeah, you, did. Uh, but, you were close. But, but Trevor is not exactly, you know, he's not heading to Canton down there. I mean, you know? goodness. I mean, Look this, at you that. just don't know. It's this isn't to rip on these guys or whatever. It's just to underscore how inexact. Drafting quarterbacks up high is. That is, uh, I mean, Marcus had a one-year run. Jameis went 30 for 30 in one year, 30 touchdown, 30 interception. Carson Wentz pretty much got booted out of his city. Mitch, Josh Rosen, I ain't got nothing yeah, to say yeah, about yeah. Josh Rosen, did he even make it to three no. years? The guys that you can look at in recent years where you would watch them play right away as rookies and say, all right, this is legit. I count CJ. I count Joe Burrow. Okay, like Joe Burrow. The first time you laid eyes on Joe Burrow, you were like, "Oh, okay, wow, yeah, okay, you know. yeah, that's real." Nobody was surprised that he succeeded in Cincinnati. Everyone saw it coming beforehand because of his style in college. the 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 nature of his, the way he played the position at LSU was very NFL style. Yeah, it was. So it- Rico wants to buy the show. Uh, you can let them. You can let them, DK. I'm here for that. Rico says, serious question. Can can me, Rochelle, Barber, and whoever, we want to get together and sponsor. Oh, I thought he just wanted to buy the show. You want to sponsor <laughs> it? This is no fun. Oh, man. We, hey, were, we were ready to sell it to you. <laughs> it might be a serious situation right there, DK. He might, man. He says we could own the show just the same way the, the citizens of Green Bay own the Packers. What do you think? I'm here for oh, that. I'm- boss, Hang on. We have to go to the boss for this one. Wait, what? What's happening again? They're buying the show. 
Okay. See, Sounds she's good. easy. Sounds good. <laughs> she's easy. That's that's too easy, Dolly. Just send us to the to well, the shadow. I mean, I didn't give him the price yet, so. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Just get them at the table, right? Yeah, right. Get Make sure the they table. show up for the meeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I got I got a rebuttal, man, from my guy Jackson. Jackson, by the way, if you're still listening, I don't want you to think no any. I don't I don't pay. I just get passionate about having conversations. This is what sports talk is to me. Okay, we're sitting in the barbershop, Jackson. Okay, get you a nice temple fade and everything, man. Get your part down the middle. I got you. Okay, but but here's what Jackson said. I never said top ten. There are six valuable quarterbacks that I would be considering in the first round. Not all are going in the top 10. I agree Got it. with you 100%. Got it. Here's the thing Caleb Williams gone by the time we get him. Drake May gone with the way his stock is going. Jaden Daniels gone. The, the list that I'm looking at as far as quarterback rankings is Caleb, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Michael Penix Jr., JJ McCarthy, and then Bo Nix. I don't feel confident about Michael Penix Jr., Bo Nix, or J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy may be able to wet my whistle, but as much as his draft stock is going up, I don't see him being there. So let's go Bo Nix and let's go uh, Michael Penix Jr. I'm not in love with either one of them as a first-round draft pick. And after him, it's Spencer Rattler. Now that Rico's bought the show, he thinks he can just ask multiple questions. He says, I really hate the sentiment <laughs> that Mason Rudolph is automatically the anointed after three good games and Kenny Pickett is a bust after 25 starts under a sham OC with a bad O line. Please can't we meet somewhere in the middle? Rico, once more, man, this isn't politics. We don't have to meet in the middle. To me, there's only one stance to take here. Best quarterback wins. Oh. This isn't about compromise. This isn't about getting along. This isn't about can't we all just... Uh, it's It's not. It's the best quarterback needs to start. You say Mason was anointed by whom? He's not even signed. After three good games, you say good, and he was number one in the NFL over those three games, and he carried the team into the playoffs. So, uh, hey, I got a really good answer. Patrick Mason just gave it. Go ahead. Patrick Mason just gave your answer, Rico, and he said this right here. Rico? Meeting in the middle is called competition. Middle of the field. Go meet in the middle of the field. You know? I'd much rather see that. DeMond says, uh, speaking of the 49ers, were we? Uh, yeah, I brought up Trey Lance. Okay, they didn't give Trey Lance a fair shot, and it was Lance's fault that he got injured? Niners didn't care once they saw that Brock Purdy was better than Trey. Who cares? Kenny didn't get a fair shot. If Mason is better for us, I trust Omar. And... Uh, there's other stuff that went into San Francisco's decision related to the quarterback. That was more of a one side of the table wanted one guy, another side of the table wanted somebody else. And then as soon as they saw Purdy processing their systems, they all agreed. They were all like, "Uh oh, okay. Now what do we do with this other guy that we drafted?" You, you know, the other thing too, Demond man, appreciate the contribution too. Is you speaking of the injury? Availability is the best ability. He had two straight years of season-ending injuries too. The same way Jimmy Garoppolo got booted out of where was he at? Well, both I mean, that, New yeah. England and oh. San Francisco. Yeah, I mean availability is a part of it too. And when it comes down to Kenny's situation, he's had back to back years of not finishing out the season too. Well, he finished out this season simply because he got a play down. Well, no, Coach Tomlin and went with the hot hand. Lori has a good question for you, Moan. She wants to know if Kenny uh, operates with a chip. She said, I don't know if he does. I hope he does and uses it to motivate himself. He should, Laura. I want to crack, I want to crack at this one, too. When I will, I'll just say this. Okay. He should. He He's publicly embarrassed. There shouldn't be no narrative around him as far as is it his or is it not. You got it, DK. Uh, the answer to that, Lori, family show is hell yes. Okay. The thing that Mike Tomlin loves the most about him, the thing that his teammates have loved the most about Kenny is his competitive spirit. Uh, he is going to fight for this job. But I will take that over saying no when someone asks if you learned anything from watching your offense and your teammates out on the field when you weren't playing. I want him to be that guy. I want him to fight. I want him to be the best that he can be. He is going to bring it. Okay. 
And I think that is nothing but a positive for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's why I keep stressing this isn't some kind of, you know, red versus blue, elephants right. versus donkeys and whatever else here, okay? These, this is the Steelers' benefit by having two good quarterbacks. More than anything else, more than anybody benefits from having, oh, I look, I won, I won the argument. You know, look at me. Yeah. Here, Chip DeMond is, has this one for you here. He says, hey, Moan, yeah. if it, would you agree that if Mason resigns, that it would be hard for Pickett to beat him out in a competition, especially with uh, Pickett knowing in his heart and mind that the team is behind Mason? Actually, that brings up the money thing that you've brought up in the past related to, to Trubisky. It, it does. Do you think it makes a difference in this case, though? <sighs> in this still case, the first round guy. It does, DK. But guess what? I don't think they're supposed to care about that. Okay. Like this is a person to person problem, DK. Like, uh, here we go. Let me personally use myself. They gave a crap about my feelings whenever I started an entire season and drafted Dave in the first round to play right guard the next year. Willie Colon had just got paid the year before and got injured. When I went in and played well, you think they gave a crap about Willie's feelings as far as his Achilles being torn? No, they didn't. Like, I was talking to a guy yesterday, Max Starks. He was talking about that year that uh, Jonathan Scott was in, and Max hadn't played the entire year. Jonathan Scott, I don't think, was playing well. Max came right in and started. Boom. You think they cared about Jonathan Scott? Just like that. Weren't worried about him. We, we, we worried about a guy because he has, <laughs> he has a city in his heart, right? Like, this type of stuff happens everywhere. And you know what you do as a player? You say to yourself, hopefully I'm on the team if that's the case or and I can prove myself to go beat them out. Like I, I distinctly remember in year two thinking I should have won the right guard spot. Oh, I should have won it. I was like, oh, I should have won it. And I was ticked off. I was livid. I was mad at the person that was in front of me. I was just like, how in the heck did this happen? Okay, and you know what I did? I went and practice hard. I want to say, you know what? Now, I can't let them see me sweat. And you know what happens about four games in? That dude got injured. He got back healthy. I played better than he did, and it was my spot. And then eventually I had to move over to the left because Dave was a first-round draft pick that only played right guard all his life. Yeah, he wasn't moving. He wasn't moving. Did I take that person? Dave's my guy. What, what was Dave going to do about that? He's going to come in and apologize to you? Jim, <laughs> y'all y'all putting emotions in some crap that makes no sense. Nope. nope, that's that's uh I know you're rooting for him. Heck, I am too. We might have to just root for him in a different I root hard for Josh <clears throat> Dobbs in another city. Danny wants to know which player is coming next on the show. Uh uh, what's his name? Pat gave us a yes. I actually got to hit Dan Moore back, too. Oh, this is news to me. Yeah, I know. I hit Dan and I hit Pat on the same day. Dan said he got off social media for a very long time. Imagine. Yeah. Wonder why. <laughs> he got off social media for a very the long time. The life of a left tackle, man. They never say anything good about a left tackle anywhere. Oh, no, nobody. You unless know? you're Trent Williams. That's it. You're Trent Williams and then go back to Jonathan Ogden, and then that's the end of the list. Joe Thomas, yeah. too. That's uh, it, though. I hit him back. This is on February 22nd. Hey, man, double him back and see if you want to come on the show in your free time. No pressure at all just to chop it up. He said, when, big brother? I just got my. I just got back on social media for real. I can show you the message right there. So. There you go. That's nice. That's nice. All right. Well, when we come back, we have a, a, a couple points of order to take care of here yay, yay. Uh, as we return right after this very brief break. And uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention uh, on today's show uh, the, the loss of Andy Russell, uh, a tremendous contributor to the Steelers' four Super Bowl championships in the 1970s, passed away at the age of 82. Uh, I don't believe that I ever met Mr. Russell. Uh, I don't know if you had, Moan. That's in passing. That's about it. Man. Yeah, that's kind of how I would remember it as one of those, you know, one of those just alumni meetings. That's why I said yep. I don't believe because it would be one of those that would have been real quick. And when the, the, when it's someone, when it's one of those types of meetings, the people that you have in that room, 
it floors you. Yeah, and, it and, does. and he can be. And this one, this was both Mr. Russell's blessing and curse to be part of those teams is that he got underappreciated. There's people who felt as a as a nine time Pro Bowler that he should have been in the Hall of Fame. But how could you put all eleven of them in? Man, uh, you over know? time, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. LC Greenwood's not in, and he's probably Jeez. the one who would be perceived as next in line. Jeez, man, um, that's tough, right there. Uh, it's, it, yeah. The part that gets me, you know, as as a lifer here, is that you know when I saw Mr. Russell's age today, and I saw eighty two, and I'm thinking to myself, you know what? They're all kind of in that range right now, okay? And uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna lose them, you know, oh, yeah. and you know, just over in the, in the past year now, Franco and 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 Andy Russell Andy and Russell. you know, you hope that everybody's as healthy as possible and and, and keeps living the kind of lifestyle that leads to them, you know, hanging around hanging with us around. more and showing up for more of these alumni things and waving their towel in the end zone and everything else. Yeah. You know, Moan, I believe you have some business to take care of on a Friday as always. Oh man. Always do. Uh, by the way, somebody asked Joseph asked, could we get TJ cam or mink on? Yes, we can just same a matter show, all of, of them on the out. same show. All of ooh, that'd be <laughs> killing it right there, man. But um, uh, here's the thing, man. Uh, make it back to us on Monday. You hear me? By any means necessary, call somebody you probably need to apologize to. You spark that conversation, okay? Buy somebody a random drink. Have a random conversation. We're too divided as a people sometimes, man, even on the quarterback situation, okay? But enjoy yourselves and at all costs, man. See you guys on Monday. See everybody on Monday. We'll, uh, we, you know, I, well, me, I apologize for not having been around this week. I had some me baseball too. to take care of and all that other stuff. So, uh, you know, we do the show every opportunity we get. Trust me. We do. Absolutely. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Be safe, good people.